we begin with a stunning bird's eye view of old Amsterdam in the 1920s. The area surrounding Amsterdam's central station has for long been a hub that attracts many tourists. The station was designed by architect Pierre Kuipers and built between 1881 and 1889. Its style is very similar to the Rex Museum, also designed by this architect. In front of the station, near the water, we see the Noord-Hollands Koffiehuisje, later het Smits Koffiehuisje. The old city of Amsterdam is one of the most picturesque places in the world. The houses that border Amsterdam's canals, the so-called grachten, have distinct facades. There are various types of gables, the clock, step, point and neck gables, easily recognizable by their shapes. A great location is the area near the Nikolaaskerk, not far from the central station, called Het Kolkje. The Nikolaaskerk, with its characteristic dome, is one of the remarkable buildings that comes into sight as soon as you arrive at the central station. This beautiful basilica was built in 1887 and certainly worth a visit. Amsterdam is well known for its canals. Three canals that are constructed in a semicircle surround the old center. The Keizersgracht, Prinsengracht and Herengracht. In the summer these canals are filled with sightseeing tour boats. In early ages they formed a vital infrastructure for the delivery of goods that arrived at Amsterdam Harbour. Here we see the Ronde Lutherse Kerk, built between 1668 and 1671. It was damaged a number of times by fire.
When heading for the old center, you will most likely walk from the central station to the Dam via the Damrak, passing Amsterdam's splendid stock exchange halfway on the left, the so-called Beurs van Berlage. It is a great example of early modern architecture by Hendrik Peters Berlage and built between 1889 and Arriving at the Dam, you will come eye to eye with the Royal Palace by architect Jacob van Kampen and built between 1648 and 1665. It serves as a reception palace and in the early centuries functioned as a city hall. Going further into Old Amsterdam, you are bound to encounter the Munstoren with its nearby splendid floating flower market. The Scheepvaarthuis on the Jan Hendrik Kade was built in 1913 and the home of six major shipping companies. The characteristic Waag at the Nieuwmarkt, built in the 15th century, used to be one of the entrance gates to the old city. Another great gate to old Amsterdam is the Muiderpoort at the Alexanderplein and built around 1770. Also a gate worth mentioning is the Amsterdamse Poort located on the edge of Haarlem and built in the 14th century. Weekly markets are held nearby this gate. The Stadsuniversiteit, currently known as the Universiteit van Amsterdam, is one of the lesser known buildings in Amsterdam. The building dates from 1632 and was elevated to university status in 1877. Not far from the rear of the Rijksmuseum, opposite the Museum Plain, is the Great Concertgebouw building. Its acoustics are world renowned. The Rijksmuseum Opened in 1885 and designed by Pierre Kuipers, is a must-see for any tourist. Not only does it house the famous Nachtwacht, Nightwatch painting by Rembrandt van Rijn, but the museum also has a huge collection of works by Dutch masters from the 17th century. Here we see a very interesting rare type of bus at the entrance of the Rijksmuseum. This is the so-called polderhuisje near the museum. Its gardens are also most certainly worth a visit.
When you say Amsterdam, then Rembrandt is the name that immediately springs to mind. The place where he worked and lived in the Odebreestraat, the so-called Rembrandt House, built in 1606, is an interesting place to visit. There is also a cinema theatre which bears his name. It is located at the Rembrandt Plain Square. Here we see huge crowds in 1919 flocking to watch the film The Koning in der Aarde, with Mia May in the lead role. Here we are at the Leidse Plain, with its many kiosks.
andere Spinoza Huis is where famous Dutch philosopher Spinoza lived in the 17th century before he moved to The Hague. Spinoza was a radical who criticized the Bible, something that was not done in that period. Another prominent citizen of Amsterdam was poet and playwright Joost van den Vondel, famous for two tragedies, Geesbrecht van Amstel from 1637 and Lucifer from 1654. The Vondel Park, with its statue, has in recent years been a magnet for hippies and protest marches. Amsterdam always was a city of joy. Here we see a number of street artists in action. The well-known song, There are 9 million bicycles in Beijing, could just as well have been written for Amsterdam, because everybody in the city owns a bike and has done so almost since bicycles were invented. Like Antwerp, many Jewish people lived in Amsterdam for centuries, the diamond industry being one of their core trades. The famous Cullinan diamond, one of the British crown jewels, was cut here in the workshop of the Koninklijke Asher Diamant Maatschappij. Pigeons are plentiful in Amsterdam, if not to say sometimes a pest, although many Amsterdam residents have held pigeons as a hobby for centuries. Unspoilt, quiet spot in old Amsterdam was and still is the Begeinhofje, founded in the 14th century when nuns have the domicile. Despite Amsterdam's century-long role as a trade hub dating from the VOC period, large parts of the city remained poor. Here are some glimpses of what daily life was like in working-class neighborhoods. Some old neighborhoods, like the Willemstraat and the Utrechtse Dwarsstraat, were renovated around 1930, as can be seen here.
The old city of Amsterdam is one of the most picturesque places in the world. The houses that border Amsterdam's canals, the so-called grachten, have distinct facades. There are various types of gables, the clock, step, point and neck gables, easily recognizable by their shapes. This is exceptional footage of old Amsterdam. We see old trams in the city as early as in 1919 near the Waterloopplein and the Blauwe Brug. Here are trams near the Willemspoort. The Blauwe Brug. De Montelbaanstoren uit de Oude Schans dates van 1516.
The harbour of Amsterdam is the second largest in the Netherlands, after Rotterdam. It used to be directly connected to open sea until the IJsselmeer got closed off by the Afsluitdijk in the 1930s. Since then the only way to open sea is via the Noordzee Kanaal. A 21 km long canal to Eymuiden opened in 1876. Amsterdam was originally built as a settlement on the banks of the river Amstel. The old city name used to be Amstel Redam, but colloquially became Amsterdam. The river still has a major role to play. Here are some great scenes of the river and its many quaint manually operated drawbridges. This is the famous Magere Brug, i.e. the Skinny Bridge, originally built in 1691. In the 1920s period, when these scenes were shot, Amsterdam had already started to redevelop. Here are some examples of what at the time was modern architecture. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.